Vatican City, the unique Catholic state within the city of Rome. We're here today to witness the beginning of a unique and ultra-secret process to select the successor to Pope Paul VI, who died 19 days ago. In those intervening days, the cardinals of the church from around the world have gathered here in Vatican City, and today we'll enter under lock and key to what is called a conclave and begin the process of looking for a man to succeed him, to become the next pope. A word of description, perhaps, about the word conclave. It comes from the Latin with key. It stems particularly from the year 1216, when the cardinals of the day were gathered to elect the new pope. The people outside thought they were taking too long, and so they literally locked them up to hasten the process. That tradition in the intervening years has never changed. It's a colorful ceremony which we're going to witness this afternoon for the first time, and so we hope you will stay with us as the cardinals go from one chapel into the famous Sistine Chapel to find the new leader of the Roman Catholic Church. Frank? Thank you, Peter, and good morning from Washington. As Peter has explained, we are about to witness the beginning of an ancient and solemn event, the election of the 263rd successor to St. Peter, the pontiff of the Roman Catholic Church. Tradition is law in the election of the Pope, but there is a new element to today's event. For the first time, the ceremonies opening the conclave of the College of Cardinals are being televised around the world. We shall witness the procession, we see part of it here, of the cardinals, all 111 of them, to the Sistine Chapel, where the balloting will take place. Unfortunately, we shall not be permitted to witness the actual voting. Back to Rome and my colleague, Peter Jennings. Good morning, Peter. Thank you, Frank, and good morning again. The gentleman you are looking at in the background of your picture is Monsignor Virgilio Noe. He is the master of ceremonies today for the 111 cardinals who have gathered here in Vatican City from around the world since Pope Paul's death 19 days ago. They are now in the Pauline Chapel in Vatican City. Pauline Chapel built in 1538. And the procedure of entering the conclave, of entering this ultra-secret meeting, has now officially begun. To begin with, from our commentary position here in Rome, let me introduce uh, two now familiar voices to you from the Society of Jesus, the Assistant General, Father Vincent O'Keefe from Jersey City, New Jersey. Father O'Keefe, nice to work with you again. Thank you, Peter. And uh, a long, uh, supremely excellent broadcaster, Bob Trout. Good afternoon, Robert. Good afternoon. Privilege to be here to watch the conclave open. I might tell you, as you look at some of the cardinals who are gathered in the Pauline Chapel now, that it is late afternoon in Rome on a very hot day. And the actual procession from the Pauline Chapel now through the Royal Hall, through the Sala Regia, into the Sistine Chapel is going to begin. In the background, you hear the famous Sistine Choir. throughout this day, come Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, an inspirational hymn to send the 111 cardinals on their way from the Pauline Chapel into the Sistine Chapel and these extraordinarily important political and spiritual deliberations on who the next Pope will be. Latin and Roman world, as we see in this chapel as well. 
Yes, Peter, the procession is now beginning. It's taking form and moving out of Pauline Chapel. Many may recognize the first cardinal, Cardinal Villo, who will be the senior cardinal at the conclave during the voting. He had been the Secretary of State. Alongside him is the Italian Cardinal Samore, and directly behind them, the Master of Ceremonies. Cardinal Baggio now passing on the screen, one of the candidates. And the Cardinal from Egypt, Cardinal Sedaros. Cardinal Wyszynski from Poland, and the screen. And behind him, Cardinal Koenig from Vienna. never seen before on television. It is in fact with the agreement, of course, of all the cardinals here in Rome. And with the particular encouragement of the American cardinals here, that this particular portion of the ceremony be seen throughout the world, part of the church's efforts to further involve people in the process of electing the new pontiff. Either the tall gentleman in lay clothes to the left of the screen is Don Giulio Sacchetti. He is the governor of the Vatican Palace and will have a role to play in the closing of the conclave. As they leave the Pauline Chapel, Bob Trout, they move into a place where we have walked before, the Thalia Regia, yet another extraordinarily ornate hall in Vatican City. Yes, the Thala Regia, the rather royal room, I suppose we should call it, in this particular instance is being used as a passageway from the Pauline Chapel, where the procession formed, to the Sistine Chapel, where the 111 cardinals will be sealed in, and where the conclave will begin. So the actual first vote is not to begin until tomorrow. Father, did you say that this is a particular cardinal? Yes. You may notice that they're wearing that hat they're wearing is the Beretta. We've seen a succession of cardinals. Some may have recognized Cardinal Urugamba from Africa, Cardinal Sunan's well-known from Brussels behind him. This is a scene that not only has never been on television before, but no one has ever seen it before outside the higher reaches of the church. Is that true? That's true, yes. And this is the most numerous group we've had. The last group was 80. And as everyone knows now, we have 111 of these cardinals, led by Cardinal Villo, who is now passing the center screen. 100 of whom have never taken part in this and have never seen it either. That's right. Somewhere in this procession, too, is a man who is likely to be the next pope. So it is not mandatory that these cardinals elect a man from within their own ranks. It is eminently likely influence here, too, from around the world. Eight cardinals from the United States, three from Canada, 19 from Latin America, a very strong and influential block of 24 from Western Europe, five from Eastern Europe, 27 from Italy, Italy which for many years had the largest number of cardinals, no longer has the single largest group, 10 from Asia, 12 from Africa, and three from Australia and New Zealand. whether they had made up their minds before going into this conclave. Most of them said no. So I think they're, they're waiting to see human and divine signs as to whom they, should be, whom they should pick as the best man. Not something always that 
many of us understand, which is the factor of divine guidance which occurs throughout this. I recall Cardinal Kroll of Philadelphia recently speaking forcefully on how important divine guidance is as they go through this procession today. I think it is, and we can see Cardinal Kim the Korean alongside Cardinal Cook showing the international quality of this gift. The Cardinals will certainly not be alone in this closed environment, which will not in itself be confined to the Sistine Chapel, but will be a fairly large area inside Vatican City with, among other things, an opportunity to walk outdoors in at least one large courtyard. They will be locked up with uh, nuns from a semi-hotel here in Vatican City who will cook for them, uh, with firemen, uh, with barbers, who, if the cardinals wish, will either cut their hair or shave them, as the case may be, and a series of attendants to run the business of the conclave because we have no idea how long it will take. On screen now, on screen left, Cardinal Poletti, the vicar of Rome, with Cardinal Manning from Los Angeles, followed by Cardinal Tunga from Kenya, and Cardinal Madera, Madera from, Boston. from Boston. May I say that that scaffolding we see in the background supports the chimney that soars way up to the roof of the Sistine Chapel and will furnish the smoke black or white. Somewhat over 100 feet, Bob, 35 meters, they told us. Father Keith, why did they first put on that Beretta and then take them off again? Uh, when they're moving in procession, that's considered part of the garb. But once they enter the, the chapel, the, the holy place, then they move the Beretta. But they keep their Tsuketa on, that little skull cap, which is crimson. Cardinal Olorscheid on screen, one of the better known prelates from Brazil. The small cardinal left screen now is Cardinal Azafi Mahatratra from Madagascar, one of our own three Jesuit cardinals present in this conference. itself, doesn't it, Father? Yes, straight across, except for one small opening, and you may have noticed a ramp that leads up through that balustrade and then into the chapel itself. The Sistine Chapel, probably the most, without question, I think, the most beautiful chapel in Vatican City, built in the years between 1475 and 1483, and dedicated to the Assumption of the Virgin Mary. And even today, no camera is allowed inside. This camera is outside looking in with a long lens, I assume. In the distance behind the grill, the 
great work of Michelangelo, the Last Judgment. upon which the cardinals will place the vote when they do move into the election of the new pope. They will write it and place the writing on the paper there. And Close. these are the doors that will be closed and sealed as the cardinals begin their conclave within just a few minutes. In the conclave, there are only two ways literally to get out. One is if you die, which is not altogether unheard of. One cardinal, the exiled cardinal from China, has already unfortunately died since Pope Paul himself died 19 days ago. Or if the doctors who accompany the cardinals as well swear under oath man is sick enough and must leave. Each one of these cardinals has an assigned place, and the masters of ceremonies are showing the cardinals to their places. They will occupy the same places throughout the conclave, no matter how long it takes. And when they are all assembled, the singing will end, and we will go toward the final prayer. Yes, that's absolutely right. They're still singing that, that uh, ancient hymn to the Holy Spirit. Here you see in the center, Cardinal Villo, who will be directing the conclave, to his left is Monsignor Noe, who is the Master of Ceremonies, and to Carnivillo's right is the Assistant Master of Ceremonies, Monsignor Coquette. finished and you see sent to camera Monsignor Noe who will now proclaim the famous extra omnis. All should leave the chapel. absolutely sure that the smoke comes out white or black on previous occasions. Uh, there has been some doubt and so they add chemicals to it to make absolutely sure the colors are correct. In 
and so with the words ex omnes, everybody out, the doors of the Sistine Chapel close. It is Pope Paul who himself, whose successor they look for, who sought this secrecy, who had a passion for it. I think it is most unlikely, Father O'Keefe, as they begin this uh, momentous vote, that there will be any deviation from that secrecy. I think we will have to wait for the smoke, don't you? Wait and see, yes. An election in the most magnificent circumstances and surroundings that any election anywhere in the world has ever had. With the closing of those great wooden doors at the Sistine Chapel, our attention now turns for the results of the Cardinal's deliberations to a single chimney here in Vatican City. There is no electronic device by which the Cardinals will signal their decision to the world. It will be simply by the color of smoke. When black smoke comes out of the chimney, we will know that the process to elect a new pope has not been completed and no single man has won two-thirds of the votes of the Cardinals present. When the smoke emerges white, we and the rest of the world will know that a new pope has been elected. He will momentarily then choose a new name and shortly after that appear on the papal balcony to give his first blessing as pontiff to the thousands of people here and throughout the world. We have no idea how long it will take. It has been a suspenseful week. With the locking of those doors, the suspense simply heightens.